and welcome to Travel Beans. I am Sir Emma, behind the camera is Sir Alex, and today we are in Tintagel learning a little bit about King Arthur. Good morning, Beans. Today we are in Tintagel, which is a place that has many links to King Arthur. Today we are starting at King Arthur's Hall to learn a little bit about him before heading off and seeing some of the sites more closely linked to him. This hall is the largest marble and granite hall in Europe and was built in the 30s. Many films and TV shows have been shot here. And also, this building has the largest collection of stained glass windows in the country, with 72 stained glass windows depicting the story of King Arthur surrounding the Great Hall. Who was King Arthur? So King Arthur was a legendary leader back in Britain in the 5th century who waged war against the evil Saxons coming to invade and steal his country. King Arthur may or may not have been a real guy. However, what we do know is there are a lot of stories and folklore associated with him. You've probably heard of some of them, such as the Holy Grail, Lancelot, Sword in the Stone, uh, the Sword Excalibur. There are so many. A bit like Robin Hood, it may or may not be true, but it's interesting to learn about anyway. We're feeling very excited right now. In a few previous videos, I've mentioned that I have a few favourite birds, and one of them I've been looking for over the course of this England series is the peregrine falcon, which is the fastest animal in the world, and it still kind of blows my mind that we have them here in England. This spot here along the southwest coast is one of your best chances to spot them in the whole of England because there's 20 pairs nesting in a relatively small stretch. We were just walking along, and I think we just got a glimpse of our first one. There was something flying around and then it dropped down at incredible speed in the way that the falcon drops down. Now I'm just trying again to find it to get another glimpse. I very much doubt we're going to be able to actually get a clip of it, but rest assured, we think we've seen it and that counts. <laughs> As a kid, I used to see a bunch of them around Western Supermare, my hometown, and I used to get so excited, but I haven't seen one for about 20 years now and I've been dying to find one so I can show Emma finally. Behind me is the entrance to Tintagel Castle. Now this place has a bit of significance with regards to the King Arthur stories. Allegedly, he was conceived here. It seems a little bit of a strange fact for you, but there's actually an interesting story that goes along with it. According to the stories, Merlin actually orchestrated the whole conception. Merlin the wizard helped to disguise the King of England, Uther Pendragon, to be able to sneak into Tintagel Castle, which was his enemy's castle, and sleep with his wife, the naughty bugger. And then he got her pregnant, she had Arthur, and that's the story of how he was born. Behind me is Merlin's cave, which is actually located just underneath Tintagel Castle. So unfortunately, it is also closed today. However, usually during low tide, you can actually go down to the beach and walk into the cave. It's actually more of a tunnel than a cave. It was caused by sea erosion, and you can actually go in on this end and pop out the other side of the island. It is also allegedly haunted by Merlin himself. So if you're brave enough to go in there, come back here in the summertime when they've reopened. Another th interesting thing about the castle is that it wasn't always accessed by bridge. It was one huge piece of land with the castle on top of it, but because it's on some sort of fault line, there was actually a lot of erosion that happened, and now they actually had to build a bridge so that you could go from one side to the other. If stinky false old stories are not your cup of tea, then we've got you covered here as well. So this place is also another great hotspot for wildlife. If you're lucky, 
from up here you can spot basking sharks out in the ocean. Also, if you shove your eyes in the direction of the sea, you might get a glimpse of seeing a seal. Interestingly, during the medieval times, the seal was classed as a fish, which meant that they could actually eat it on Lent or on Fridays and Sundays. The coast here is extremely dramatic and actually I don't think the camera will do it justice. This is another spot along the southwest coastal path, which we've talked about in the previous two videos, which is a path that is the longest one in England going all along the southwest peninsula. We're now going to have a little walk along and see if we can find any more wildlife. So you've decided that Tintagel is the place for you, but you need somewhere to rest your weary head. <laughs> the regular subscribers know exactly what is about to come. We are staying at the YHA Tintagel, which is a stone throw away from Tintagel Castle. So it's right next to the main tourist attractions in the area. So it's a really cozy little place right on the coast and has amazing views for picnics. The place is overlooking the ocean. So if you have a keen interest in nature, then keep an eye out because you might see some of the awesome animals we've mentioned. It's located right along the coastal walk here. So as well as being close to the main sites of Tintagel, you also have a load of great walking routes. King Arthur is not the only legend around these parts. Just one mile away from the coast, you have this woodland walk leading you to a waterfall that has its own interesting legends and history. Hello. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost We stand on the opposite shore Hello Ramona I reach through mysterious ceilings This is a top walk and I have a little tip for you guys if you do ever come here and you want to save a bit of money you can actually do 95% of the walk for free and you just have to pay for the last bit that's right apparently nature can be owned and you have to pay to have your little <laughs> slice of it I don't actually have any issue in paying it's very well kept here if you do come here it's just over five quid and the woman told us that you cannot go here without getting your feet wet and they do provide wellies for you yes that's right the beans have adequate footwear appropriate footwear come on <laughs> We are now here at St. Nexon's Glen, which is a 60-foot waterfall surrounded by nature. In the 6th century, St. Nexon was said to have sighted his hermitage above the waterfall here. So what's a hermitage? A hermitage is a place where people live religiously in seclusion, which is probably where the word hermit comes from. Legend has it that St. Nectar would sit in his cave and ring a silver bell to warn shipping of the dangers of the rocky coast. So he would ring it and it would go through the whole gorge out to the ocean? Yes, legend has it. Jesus, legends are shit. Legends are weird. It is said to be an extremely spiritual place and walking through the forest here is definitely tranquil and relaxing and definitely worthwhile visiting if you're in the area.
far as waterfalls go, that one was pretty epic. We have seen our fair share of powerful waterfalls in our time, and although this one was not on that scale, it was so unique, it looked like a water slide. Something that blows my mind is that one mile behind us is the ocean, with all its jaggedy cliff edges and caves cut out of the rock, and then here, you're in this magical enchanted forest with a beautiful waterfall at the end. There is so much variety here, I love it. As it stands, this is the second to last video that we are going to be doing on our England road trip. We are leaving very soon. Next up, we're going to be making our way down to the Eden Project in the very, very south of Cornwall. So if you like this video, can you please, just for once in your life, give it a thumbs up! <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and of course, leave us a comment. Let us know what is your favourite unique waterfall. And there is nothing left to do apart from to say thank you very much. <laughs> I hope you've had a lovely day with us, the beans. And beans out! <laughs>